Hello and welcome to the Penguin Prof channel. This is part of my college success series and I want to talk about how to jumpstart your new semester or new academic year. I really want to talk about how to be proactive and not reactive and how to get yourself ready for success. Most importantly, how to avoid burnout and keep your motivation levels high. Before we get into it, you know the drill, I gotta ask for your support. Please show some love, click those buttons below. I also wanna thank Audible for sponsoring this channel. You can download a free audiobook of your choice by clicking the link below. Normally I share a book that I've read recently, but I actually wanna share this entire series by Move With. They are free to Audible subscribers and they can help you strengthen your body as well as your mind. They are excellent. I am doing the half marathon training uh, right now. All right, let's get into it. This proactive versus reactive crisis management, this is really the key to, to being a successful student. Trust me on this. You want to plan. Don't react. Life is just better. Um, so preparing your physical space is always a good place to start, having a nice declutter. I like to declutter all of my working spaces. You know, you want to evaluate everything on your desktop. Does it make you productive or happy? Um, if not, there's really no reason for it to be there. I'm trying to go paperless as much as possible, so when papers do come across my desk, I will either store them or scan them or shred and, and recycle them. You want to do the same thing with your digital spaces as well. Clean up your desktop. I just read that 30% of professionals have more than 100 items on their desktop. That's just ridiculous. Clean up your mobile devices too and evaluate where you want to access social media. I know a lot of people are saying you just need to get rid of all social media. I don't know that that's realistic, but you can control where and when you access it. And I think that can be a really, really powerful thing. Another thing that you should do is prepare for the entire semester on one master calendar like this. Put all of your big deadlines all of your exam dates. But in terms of day-to-day, -day, I find that for students, a weekly calendar is best. So using Google Calendar or some other app, you want to enter all of your recurring events, both work and school and personal. And then each week you can add, you know, the special events for the week. This is, this is really pretty obvious. But one of the most important things you want to do on this weekly calendar is each week evaluate when your best study blocks are going to occur. Now, this video is not about how to study or how to take good notes, but I do want to talk about your rhythm. Okay, this is a hugely powerful thing to know. Half the battle, I think, is figuring out how to make a schedule that works with your natural rhythms as much as possible, okay? By that, I mean you have this primary productivity time, whether you get up early in the morning or you're most productive late at night, you want to schedule all of the things that require your full attention during that time. That is not when you want to be answering emails or scrolling on your phone. You can save that for times when you know you have less energy. Another thing you want to think about is how to make the most of your time off. And by that, I mean, are you the kind of person that needs a little bit of break time each day? Or do you want to have all of your break time, you know, by taking like half a day or a full day off each week? Really think about this because that's what's going to make your life so much happier. Don't forget this very important thing. More frequent and shorter duration study blocks are much more effective than less frequent, longer duration blocks. Small blocks, even 20, 30 minutes, those are more effective for your spaced repetition and active recall sessions. After each week, especially in the beginning of a new semester, Evaluate it. You know, did it work out the way you thought? Um, what changes can you make to make your time more productive? Something else that I highly recommend is making a help calendar. So make another calendar and put in all of your professor's office hours, your TA's office hours, any tutorial center hours. Put all that in there so that when you need help, you immediately have a calendar and you know when and where to go. All right, this leads to the most important thing, I think, which is how to maintain your motivation levels and avoid burnout. Because here's the thing, 
in the beginning of the semester, you find yourself saying, this is great because we're starting something new and everything is shiny and your classmates are really cute and fun, right? And everybody's all excited. So what happens? Things start to get tedious. You start to slip. And it kind of starts to look like this, right? For a lot of people, the difference in your motivation between the first day of class and somewhere around maybe a third or halfway through the semester, things just kind of fall apart. And here's part of the problem. The brain focuses on what you're doing well and avoids what is difficult. So students will spend more time studying on the subjects that they are excelling in, and they start to avoid the ones that they're struggling with the most. Obviously, this is a recipe for disaster, but knowing this is extremely powerful because this will help you to be proactive and avoid a crisis after it's already occurred. Do you hear yourself in this? This is so hard, I just can't do it. Everyone else is getting it and I just can't understand it. Why is this so difficult? And then you feel yourself losing motivation and wanting to give up. Here's a news flash, you guys. Everyone is struggling and it's not a bad thing. This is actually a good thing. This is when learning is happening. When it's difficult, that's when you know you're doing the right thing, okay? If it's easy, what that means is your brain is already wired for this stuff. You already know this information. Nothing new is really happening. Think about it like exercise, okay? Lifting weights that are too light won't do anything for you. The brain and the body work the same way. You must challenge yourself in order to change. This actually comes from uh, Move With, the half marathon training program. I love this. Success in long distance running is about learning to be comfortable being uncomfortable. This is true in all areas of life. So when this happens, as soon as you start to slip, go and get help. All I can tell you guys is don't wait. Just don't wait. Don't wait until it's a crisis. Don't wait until you've like crashed and burned on multiple quizzes. As soon as you slip, get the help that you need. Don't let your brain just shut down and say, I'm not doing well. I don't like this. I'm not going to look at it. Don't do that. An important aspect of avoiding burnout is self-care. You've got to sleep. You've got to eat. You nourish your body and your mind with healthy food, and you must manage stress. You must get some exercise, you must get some social activity, and you must learn how to relax. This is not something that you can just put off until there's a time in your life when you have time for this, okay? Being a student is one of the most stressful times in life that you're going to have. This is precisely the time you need to address this. I really can't stress this enough. If you really want to keep yourself going and stay strong for the duration of the semester, the academic year, your entire academic program, there is no secret. You have to take care of yourself or it's just not going to happen. Would you run a marathon without preparing yourself mentally and physically? Um, being a student, taking especially math and science courses, it's exactly the same. You have to take care of yourself if you're going to expect to come out on top. If you want more help with study skills and other things, um, visit my website, penguinprof.com, click help, and then study skills. This is a work in progress, so your feedback on this would be greatly appreciated. As always, I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for visiting the Penguin Prof channel. Please show your support by clicking those buttons below, like, share, subscribe. Join me on social media, and good luck.